Hey folks, good morning. It's Ben Capozzi with Elmwood Farm Tree Crops and uh, I'm up here at uh, Ralph's Orchard uh, here on our property. Ralph is my wife's grandfather and um, Ralph is the one who originally uh, attended this orchard but he's been gone now about 20 years and uh, today is uh, December 17th. Uh, it's going to be about 50 today. It's not there yet but um, I'm just going to kind of walk around the orchard a bit and look at some of the trees and I'm going to start with uh, this peach tree here behind me and uh, I'll tell you a little story about that um, there's not excuse me <clears throat> there's not many peach uh, not many trees left here I think there's only about half a dozen uh, if that but um, this peach tree over my shoulder here was uh, healed in the year that Ralph died and um, healing in a plant means basically uh, you don't fully plant it uh, you're not sure where it's gonna go or for whatever reason you can't plant it at the time so you take sort of uh, the bare root plant uh, when it's dormant usually and you just kind of lay it in a uh, you dig a, a shallow a hole or a trench you kind of lay the plant over in it and then you cover the roots with dirt you want to keep the roots from drying out you want to keep them from freezing and uh, it's just kind of a, uh, a triage or a stopgap measure to uh, keep the plant tidy until you're ready to deal with it and um, what actually happened is that uh, that was the same year that Ralph passed and so this is the tree that he healed in that was never properly planted and um, it just went ahead and grew where it was um, it's not in great shape right now uh, I don't know enough about restoring um, a tree this old um, well old 20 years but um, I don't know much about restoring a tree that's uh, in this kind of shape but I'm gonna do a quick tour of it and some other trees here in uh, what's left of the orchard uh, and where we hope to build our orchard and uh, we'll just walk around and check out some trees so let's go take a look at this peach so you know it's December 17th so obviously um, the tree is uh, asleep and dormant and um, this tree is old with a lot of dead parts um, if we get in close and start to look at some of the branches like here and up here it's uh, it's old and crusty and uh, you know it's almost, it's almost like it's barnacled um, it's it's just age uh, and neglect on this tree but none of this is fruiting wood um, I mean it should be right you see spurs and things like that that you're used to seeing on a, on a tree that's gonna fruit um, but this peach tree most of it is dead um, there's a lot of damage um, but you know that what I kind of like is that even in death it's uh, providing uh, services to uh, everything that's still alive so that's pretty cool there's uh, something is set up a little nest there but mostly what I'm looking for if there's you know scion wood um, first year growth that I could collect to maybe graft this tree uh, neither my wife nor uh, her dad uh, or anyone else uh, at the farm now has any idea what kind of peach tree this is um, <clears throat> but still it would be neat to preserve some of it so uh, I've just been kind of looking at all the uh, the end tips to see you know if there's anything and um, I was a little excited by this because it was kind of reddish uh, which suggested that maybe it was a little bit alive but mostly I'm excited because this branch right here that's red and alive that's red and alive so I'll come back or I can come back in February this up here is red and alive so I can come back here in February and take uh, several cuttings um, from this part here and try and uh, bud graft them this summer or uh, do dormant grafting um, in the uh, spring it just depends um, last year I had terrible luck grafting peaches not a one of them took but that could have been my root stock so uh, anyhow we'll check and see but you know just a lot of these branches are old and uh, they look unhealthy there's a lot of damage um, there's a lot of competition there's a tree um, there's a tree um, there's a pretty big tree right there so there's all these other trees that are coming up competing with it and Bless its heart, this poor tree, not only under assault or under siege by this giant uh, poison ivy uh, vine, which has climbed all over it, which, ugh, I hate this stuff, I'm super allergic to it, um, but also I feel like that right there is either, I'm guessing that's Virginia creeper. Um, it could be part of uh, the poison oak and ivy. I'm not sure what the young branches that lo of that look like. Well, I guess they look like that, but that looks more like a, Virginia creeper to me but it could be um, something far worse but either way I need to come here uh, now in the winter when the tree is asleep and prune out a ton of this stuff if I'm gonna try and uh, reinvigorate this tree so um, there's a lot of work to be done on this tree you can see there's broken uh, and damaged branches um, that's almost uh, from what I've read that's always like one of your your very first starting things to do is remove damaged or diseased 
leaves and branches so a lot of this tree would be cut out in fact if I came here and worked on this tree I would cut it way way back um, and you know different folks will tell you general rule of thumb is uh, never cut more than a third off of a, a tree um, at any given time even if it's uh, asleep in the winter it, within a year never cut off more than a third so if this tree needs to be cut back like you know 75 percent you've got to do it over the course of three years uh, instead of just do it all um, at once it can be way too stressful for the tree so um, but I'm just happy to see that there's still some living parts of this uh, peach tree so that gives me hope that perhaps it uh, can be rejuvenated so that's kind of cool here you can see the uh, a Virginia creeper and uh, poison ivy that uh, has worked its way off of the shed here and onto this tree. Um, here is another tree. This one is an apple tree and um, it's definitely alive. There's uh, leaves still on the tree. There's tons of uh, vertical vigorous growth and it's got lots and lots of fruiting spurs on all these great little gnarled branches. I have no idea how old this tree is. I'd have to ask uh, my father-in-law but this apple tree uh, I think is definitely not gone um, far from it I think it could be rejuvenated and restored it needs to be thinned out I mean look at what a tangle it is up there so that all needs to be cleared out uh, you know you always look for uh, cross branches crossing branches where uh, they're kind of growing and rubbing on each other that's never good that'll create damage there's disease stuff in here that needs to be cut out obviously there's stuff just kind of clear that away and pick some you know some dedicated branches that you're gonna have, you know, five or seven uh, main branches, main lines. I'm at least happy that there's no um, vine uh, attacking this tree. And uh, the ground is relatively clear. Um, some sort of boring insect, I guess, is working around the trunk. I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, it's something I can research. This whole branch here is dead, right? Need to take that off. Look at all the damage there and all that. That's gotta come off. Um, this boring damage is uh, is on a lot of parts of the tree, but look at all these uh, uh, water sprouts, all this vertical growth. That's all alive and living. Um, I don't need to cut that um, with my uh, razor blade to know that that's alive. That's living cambium there, and the tree looks good. I mean, sounds nice, um, feels nice. It's just it's got great character, and uh, you know it's like that Monty Python sketch. I'm not dead yet. You know I'm feeling better. I think I'll go for a walk. Um, I think none of the trees um, set fruit um, recently. I don't think uh, my father-in-law can remember any of them setting fruit uh, for some years, but I could be wrong. But um, I think a good thinning uh, would help uh, all of this. Uh, it definitely can hurt, so that's, uh, that's a fun project for me to work on. There's um, pecans and uh, walnuts here that uh, uh, my wife's uh, grandfather set up. And um, I don't know enough about them to talk much about them, but there are uh, a couple more uh, fruit trees. I think they're apple trees and uh, they're uh, over on the other side of this fence. So we'll walk over there now. There's a little uh, stand of, <clears throat> excuse me, of pecan trees. And there's uh, some kind of, I can't remember if this was a cherry or crab apple here in the middle of the orchard. Uh, what's left of the spot, it's pretty much dead. And there's a, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, Virginia uh, juniperus virginiana which is there we go eastern red cedar so I couldn't remember it's not a true cedar it's a juniper the birds have planted there and it, it'll have to come out um, that is some kind of um, plum tree if I remember correctly again it could be a cherry when I get closer I'll know for sure but over here are the uh, three little remaining trees and um, one of them you can see is collapsed uh, has fallen over and I got a bunch of uh, water sprouts uh, vertical aggressive vertical growth off of that uh, last well earlier this year and I ran out of rootstock so I didn't graft any of it so I'm excited that um, I can try that again this year because even though I don't know the varieties of these trees um, I know that Ralph really valued them for his farm and his family so uh, I want to do what I can to preserve those trees and uh, maybe once I get them to set fruit years from now I can then uh, determine what kinds they were you know were they keepers were they uh, saucers were they pie apples uh, I'm pretty sure he didn't keep any for cider making, but um, he might have, and uh, I just haven't uh, heard that story yet. There's uh, one more fruit tree over there, but um, these are uh, are not doing so great. Obviously, you know you can see the one that's uh, that's fallen here, but again, all that vertical growth, those water sprouts, make it uh, much easier for me to take some cuttings. 
to propagate this tree. So I can get in there and you can see there's still leaves on there. So the tree fell over and then shot up vertical uh, growth all from its side, its trunk. And it's already being you know, taken over by all manner of weeds and vines and such. But all of that is first year growth. That's plenty of stuff I can grab up there to take cuttings to make graftings of this tree. And then go over here and look at this one. One of these, from what I remember looking at earlier, was seriously diseased, like the trunk had giant holes in it. Uh, this one doesn't look great, though I don't think this is the one that I was talking about. But um, lots and lots of damaged stuff up there. But um, uh, this tree's not dead. The um, That's fuzzy. That's thinking about, you know, living again. If I can get it into focus. This camera's so weird. It loves the background. There we go. But um, there's definitely some growth here that uh, I could take, first year growth here, that I could take scions from, scion wood from. And we could per, uh, perpetuate, propagate this tree. But yeah, see just lots of damage. Look up there, the whole central spot is um, quite, quite unhappy. So a lot of work to be done to bring this tree back. And you know, maybe the thing to do is just take cuttings and uh, graft them onto other trees that'll live again and then just pull this thing out with the, uh, the excavator. Uh, over there in the tree line, I know those two are uh, chestnuts, um, so that's kind of cool. You can, I can't quite see up there high enough. I don't know if those are leaves or burrs still up there, but um, I think they're opened up burrs. But uh, anyhow, so there's one apple tree, two more apple trees here, and I have no idea again, you know, historically are these red apples, uh, yellow apples, green apples, just not sure. A lot of dead stuff in that tree, um, but the if I look here on the ends for some first year growth, I find it. That's viable. Uh, that's viable. So this tree is alive and kicking. So you know what, I, what I'll do is do the best I can to, um, to try and revive these trees, to clear them out this winter. Uh, and I'll take video footage of all that and uh, share with everybody. But basically just, you know, do what I can to clear them out, clean them up. I don't know how much longer these trees have. I mean, they've been here neglected for 20 years or so. Um, they're not in great shape, uh, and like I said, maybe they'll be lost, but then again, maybe they can be restored um, to live on for another 20 or 30 years. You know, it's like, well, this tree is dying. Well, I mean, it's dying on tree time, so it, you know, it may only have a few more decades, but um, I just don't know. So it's interesting to see, and just one last thing, here's that tree that had fallen over. Here it's hopefully much more easy for you to see all that vertical growth that uh, I can take the end cuttings off of all those and get more scion wood to propagate this tree. So uh, there's a little uh, snapshot of uh, the video and the, sorry, of the orchard and on video and some of the trees that are still here. And uh, I'll keep you folks posted as we make more progress uh, up here at the uh, Elmwood Farm Orchard. Thanks for watching.